This is our ride-on mower that we use uh, in these demonstrations. Today we're going to be designing a sheet metal cover for the pulley enclosure. So let's just change our display configuration so that we're only looking at the pulley assembly. This is going to be a sheet metal enclosure, so we're going to use the sheet metal function in Solid Edge. And to start designing, really all we need to do is start sketching in 3D space. You see that I'm drawing this box here, and over there on the left hand side, I can actually key in the dimensions of how I want, of the size I want. Let's make that 190 by 200. We're working in millimeters here. So, we got a rectangle floating in space. To turn that into a piece of sheet metal, we just need to click in that area and that's going to add a thickness. Now that thickness is up here in our material table. You see we've already chosen steel as the material. And my gauge, right now it's set to 10 gauge. I'm just going to change that to 14 gauge. I'm going to go and add some flanges to the side to start making this cover uh, for the pulley. One of the big problems with traditional 3D CAD is that it'll make you memorize all sorts of different commands depending on what you want to do. You see in Solid Edge it's a much more intuitive approach. If I want to create flanges I just have to click on these edges and then hit this arrow. And that's going to go and create those flanges. You see that I can key in a value or I can pick up on a key point. In this case I'm just going to grab the edge of this bracket here to define sort of how deep I want those to go down. And you see it's added those walls complete with corner treatment. Another thing we can do, you can see we're getting a bit of interference with that bolt from the pulley. I'm just going to draw a circle on this face. Right now the dimensions aren't really important. And I'll use the dimple command to turn that into a drawn feature. Let's hide the rest of our assembly and just take a look at what we've got so far. We got a nice three-sided cover with that dimple on the top to accommodate the extra space for that shaft for one of our pulleys. Now, I want to add some precision in here, so I'm going to go up and just start adding dimensions. One of the problems with traditional 3D CAD is that everything is driven by a sketch, so that if you want to actually put in some precision and determine the size of something, you've got to go back into the driving sketch. You see that in Solid Edge, we can put dimensions anywhere in 3D space once we've already drawn something. And when we click on those dimensions, we can go and adjust them. And you see it's actually changing uh, the size of my enclosure based on that outer dimension. Another nice thing is that I can actually put a dimension on the inside. If this were a traditional 3D CAD, they'd force you to pick if you want to define your size of your enclosure by the inside or outside dimension. And then if you wanted to change that, you'd actually have to add or subtract manually the bend and uh, material thickness. You see here I can drive this either with the inside or outer dimension. I'm going to make that 175 from the inside. All right, looking at our enclosure, you see that we got some interference with this belt here. So next thing I'm going to do is just start drawing again on that surface a horizontal line. And I'm going to turn that into a jog. And let's bring that out maybe only 25 millimeters. So I've created a jog just like that. We still got some interference with that belt, so maybe this time what I'll do is I'll just pick, click on this edge here, this face. And you see I've got this, this arrow. This is sort of our multi-purpose tool in Solid Edge. And it allows you to do some pretty cool stuff. For instance, I'm just going to move this arrow over here. And when I click on the torus, you see that it's going to allow me to swing that edge out. And all those dimensions are changing to accommodate that. I can key in a value. Maybe I want that to come out 40 degrees. And that should give me enough clearance for the rest of the things in my pulley assembly. Coming around here, uh, you see that we've got a gap in here, and I'm going to fill that in. Again, I'm going to click on that edge and just use that small arrow to create a new flange. It, by default, it'll want to go to 90 degrees, so I'll let that. And what I can do here now is I can click on this face, and just like I did before, I was swinging it out back and forth, I can use the relate command and say that I want to make that coincident to this face here. And it'll go and make that change for me.